Good afternoon and welcome to our second Lunch and Learn presented by the George Brown College Foundation today in conversation with Jennifer Campo. Before Hello. we begin, we would like to offer an acknowledgement of traditional land. We acknowledge that George Brown College is located on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the land of other Indigenous peoples that have lived here over time. Now, I'd like to turn things over to our host, Dr. Cindy Guvia, president of the George Brown College Foundation. Thank you. Thank you, Alan, uh, for your kind introduction. And thank you to the team who put this together today. I have the pleasure of um, being in conversation with Jennifer Campo, who is um, Anishinaabe from Yellow Quill First Nation with kinship ties to Eastern Region 3 Métis Nation of Saskatchewan. She was formerly the uh, minister, uh, sorry, a member of Legislative Assembly for the Saskatoon Fairview uh, region. She served as Minister of Central Services. Um, she was a sessional lecturer at the Dillon School of Business, University of Lethbridge, and has taught um, at the University of Saskatchewan, at the Athabasca University, and several other universities in the United States. Jennifer holds an MBA from the University of Saskatchewan and is now the Director of Indigenous Initiatives at George Brown College. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. That it's was such a, a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, that was a nice introduction. Thank you. Well, it's all true. Didn't make any of it up. And you know, you're you're uh, you're actually a really big deal. And we're very proud to have you today. But I want the audience to sort of get to know you more as um you know, just a, a human being rather than just the director. So let's start off with um, a question like, what are you most proud of? Um, being a grandmother. Um, I actually uh, have a two-year-old grandson. Uh, his name is Sage. Um, and he is one of the reasons why I actually am in Toronto. Um, I uh, uh, wanted to be the type of grandmother that I needed in my life. Uh, when I was uh, a young one, and um, he's an absolute joy, and I'm so blessed uh, to to have him in my life and to be able to see him every day. Um, I actually uh, live with him, so um, he's uh, I, I call him my boss. So I have, a, I have um, another boss. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's aspirational yeah. for me. Um, yeah. Not the directorship, but more the grandmother. I want to be a grandmother too. I'm not sure if my daughter has logged in, but if she has, she probably has logged out by now. Um, as the director of Indigenous Initiatives at George Brown College, um, let's talk about your career journey. I mean, uh, you know, you've done some pretty um, big jobs in mm -hmm. Saskatchewan and, yeah. you know, help us understand your, your career journey and how you got here. Yeah, it was quite unexpected, actually, um, when I, in, I didn't take the um, straight path to, to anything, any kind of way. I always find a, a way for it to make it difficult, um, and I actually didn't even finish high school. And uh, this is one of the great things about George Brown and um, how there are pathways programs for students like me back in the day who, um, you know, I, I met somebody who was in the American military, um, left home early. Um, I was 17 when I left, and instead of graduating, I decided to go get married. Um, and that's how I found myself in the U.S. Um, so there are quite a few people who don't take that straight path to getting a grade 12 and then going right into a post-secondary program and then uh, going into the workforce. So I think this is one of the reasons why it's very important um, that George Brown has other programs that it does to open up those pathways for people when they want to come back and they're ready to come back. Um, and I, I came back to Canada to uh, finish my education, um, got a, a First Nations Governance and Management degree at the Dillon School of Business at U of L. I'm still tied to them, um, and uh, decided to go and uh, finish my MBA um, at the uh, uh, Edwards School of Business in in in, in Saskatoon. Um, started uh, teaching at the time um, as well at, at the same time, but also. Um, 
uh, started my PhD, um, but I was teaching a political science course at the time, and uh, I thought it was more effective uh, for me to, uh, you know, to teach political science if I actually went through the experience of, of going through a, uh, um, participating in an election uh, cycle and um, ended up winning my <laughs> constituency. Um, and uh, it was a hard fought battle. There was a lot of door knocking. I think I, I, I believe I knocked about 14,500 doors. Um, and counted them. Yes, <laughs> counted them. <laughs> and I met a lot of people and there was a lot of lead work um, and uh, just took, you know, uh, I think it was about 10 months of straight door knocking every day, uh, three, four hours a day, um, no matter what the weather was. Uh, so that was quite an interesting um, uh experience as well as sitting in the legislature being only the second uh, indigenous woman being in the legislature and eventually becoming a cabinet minister um, i think that was a huge learning curve but definitely helped me grow um, exponentially really quickly really fast and being at those um, you know uh, top senior tables and um, effectively you know uh, making those decisions for a million and a half people that's incredible incredible work it's your hard work yeah. and tenacity that's for sure yeah. um it's early days i mean you've been with the college for how long now uh september? only since september september 8th oh. was my first day yeah for some strange reason i i feel like i've known you for a much longer time can i call you jen oh yeah go ahead like, can I, okay fine. yeah um so uh, where are you focusing most of your attention you know, in the early days right now? I think um, the early on, um, I sat down with the Indigenous Education Services team and we kind of just hashed out a vision and a mission statement. Um, and it still hasn't been officially approved. Um, but uh, basically our vision is uh, gathering together, celebrating the present, honoring the past. Uh, George Brown's Indigenous strategy is a driving force for success and grounded in the principles of reconciliation. So we wanted to have that foundation of reconciliation and, and, and moving forward together of, uh, with our uh, Indigenous students and our non-Indigenous, uh, um, uh, you know, George Brown community and, and, um, and uh, moving forward. Um, but we've also um, identified uh, key pillars uh, within the strategy and uh, four, it's, it's, four is always a nice uh, number in the Indigenous uh, community and Indigenous traditional teachings. Um, so we've identified relationships with community, access and equity, uh, student service, student services in Indigenous spaces. We bundle those together because they just go hand in hand and Indigenous learning. Um, and we've also identified our key stakeholders, which are the students, the Indigenous community, uh, the George Brown community, our Indigenous Education Council, as well as industry employers in, uh, in, in, and as important uh, our donors and allies, because I think that uh, without them, we're gonna, you know, we need all the help we can and the support we can in terms of getting our students, uh, giving them the foundations for success so that they can move on into the workforce and, um, you know, achieve what we call, um, you know, be Matsuin, which is the good life. Um, and you know, be Matsuin, did I get that right? Um, we know be Matsuin, which is in, we know yes. be Matsuin. Yeah which is an Anishinaabe word, but it's very close to another uh, word in Cree, which is um, So, but it's, it's essentially, it's the same uh, concept of achieving a good quality of life. And really, um, that's really what we would like our, you know, our young people as well as, uh, you know, our, our overall communities to have. It's, it's, and, and I think that's in having a good base in education and training and workforce development. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's no better place to do it than at George Brown College. I, I know this for a fact. Yeah, yeah, I, um, I agree. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, you talked about your four pillars, um, uh, you know, in the, the indigenization strategy for George Brown College. Is there one area or two areas that, um, you know, you see requiring a different level of support or different types of supports? And I what think would they be? access and equity um, in terms of uh, creating path, if we need to create other pathways programs, you know, to complement the existing pathways programs, 
Um, sometimes uh, we need to free up some dollars specifically for that, for starting new programs or um, for integrating a pathways program into an existing, uh, say, one of the engineering programs. Um, you know, relationships with community. Um, I myself was able to access a pathways program where uh, I was able to get um, the uh, math and science courses that I need, as well as um, um, an adult basic education, uh, 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 you know, um, certificate to get into uh, actual university programs. So um, programming such as that is, is so important, you know, being that bridge um, to say uh, getting into the faculty of engineering or you know getting into robotics um, health careers um, looking at uh, construction management um, and we also have you know world-class culinary school here at George Brown uh, uh, College um, as, as well as fashion and uh, um, definitely, I think, um, you know, accessing other dollars uh, specific to, um, you know, supporting students into those programs is important, as well as, um, you know, Indigenous learning um, and supporting scholarships. Uh, there's a misconception that there is funding for Indigenous students and it's very easy to access, which it isn't. Um, there was a cap on funding for quite a few years, as well as uh, even with my own community, there's a waiting list. So there's a lot of students that are left out of access to education because they don't have the means, the financial means to, to pay for the tuition or have a living allowance because they're, um, you know, they, ha they have to work to, um, you know, look after their families. Uh, so I think if we had uh, specific dollars for those uh, kinds of initiatives, I think it would be very helpful um, and help us, uh, you know, reach the outcomes of, of uh, you know, uh, getting people into the workforce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it is meaningful. That is very meaningful. Yeah. And, you know, the, the mission of the George Brown College Foundation is to ensure that no student is denied a post-secondary education because of financial constraints. So maybe we can be helpful yeah. to the Indigenous strategy and in acquiring more scholarships um, in that way. And for those participants who are listening and feel a little bit charitable, at this time of year, please, yeah. you know, feel free to make a donation to um, the foundation, which will go directly to students through scholarships, programming, or capital. I do want to go back to uh, something that we have in common. I'm learning that we have more than one thing in common. Um, I I also didn't finish um, high school, and um, so we both have post secondary, um, you know, degrees. And, you know, do your children ever ask you, like, how did you do it? How did you do it? Um, well, I, I have one biological daughter, but I've raised a, a lot of nieces and nephews um, and siblings. And uh, when I was in school, um, if I wasn't working, I was sitting at my table with them um, doing our homework, right? So, uh, and um, growing up, um, I was always had a, a set schedule where there was homework time. So I, I was able to do that and also good time management skills. Um, the, the courses that I took in business school um, were strategy and I started applying those same concepts to my own personal life and my studies and it worked. <laughs> so um, I, I'm a testament to that in goal setting and uh, basically uh, breaking up those larger goals into smaller goals and, and just having, you know, a 30, 60, 90 day timeline. And I, I know, I know I sound like an MBA right now, but really that, that's really what's worked for me um, in terms of being able to uh, get a couple of degrees and even start a PhD program. So um, I think uh, just being committed um, and, 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 and knowing well that it's not just me, um, you know, that there are others that I am bringing with me, um, as well as if I make a decision, if I had made the decision to leave school early, and which I had before, don't get me wrong, I've had a couple of attempts. Um, that, uh, you know, there was a whole community behind me to get me to that point. Um, and then realizing that if I left school and didn't finish this time around, then I was letting down all of those people that helped me to get to that point. So that was one of the big 
drivers of me um, finishing, um, you know, programs that weren't typically, um, you don't, you didn't see a lot of women in, or even Indigenous people within those courses at, at that time. Um, there's, there are more now, which I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to, to see in here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I often yeah. separate, you know, the attainment of education from intellect. Like I do, I do think they're separate things. Like I don't think, I, I've know, I know some really smart people, really yeah. wise people who don't have, you know, a PhD or post secondary or even, you know, an undergrad. But and and then there's the other side of the coin where you have a PhD and, you know, <laughs> um, I don't want to be tone deaf to you know the broader conversation around BIPOC uh, communities, access seeking groups um you know differently abled individuals um to be included into uh, let's say you know day-to-day -day society on a on a edi or equity diversity inclusion basis you've been doing this work pretty much most of your life what advice do you have for um, individuals who haven't been involved uh, in these conversations or i would call it a movement um, that want to take part and be helpful what mm -hmm. kind of advice do you have for those individuals out there i i would say get involved make those connections create those relationships um uh, i've been in a lot of situations where uh, people are don't know where to start they don't know where to start they have no connection into the community and um and i was just um discussing this with with another colleague yesterday I, I had the type of mother that would go into a grocery store and she'd talk to everybody. And we would take 45 minutes just to leave that grocery store from when we checked out. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, having, having that, you know, living, you know, growing up in that kind of household um, where, you know, she, she wasn't afraid to go and talk to anybody even if she had never, you know, had no connection at all. But those creating those relationships, um, I think, is very important. And if you're if you're hesitant and you're not sure, send me an email, give me a call, send me a message on LinkedIn, um, and I can make those connections. And I'm happy to do it. And I've actually done that quite a bit in the last little while, where somebody sent me a message saying, "Okay, I don't know this person, but um, you might know somebody that knows this person." And I think that's how I've been able to build up my extensive network across Canada is, is to do that. And uh, now it's, it's so much easier in terms with tech and Zoom and Teams of just uh, sending a link and then having those initial conversations. So I, I think um, that relationship building piece is, is really important. And that's, uh, you know, that's why it's one of our pillars. It's relationships with community. Mm -hmm. And for those who, um, I, th I think there's a sense of fear as well, right? Because mm -hmm. um, there's, uh, there are people, sometimes like myself, I, I, I don't know a lot about, you know, certain communities. I try to educate myself, but other than using you as a resource, because I know I can, now that, you know, we're on first name basis, I can call you up and say, Jen, like, yeah. I'm going to this meeting. I don't know what to, you know, what are there any is there anything that one should avoid when exploring these relationships um i think going in and 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 not being educated about the um um you know uh, uh barriers in terms of um of, of the barriers that uh, indigenous people face um the history um of of colonization in this country um, you know, the, the history of the residential schools. One of my mandates is to implement the TRC calls to action, um, getting familiar with those and why they are um, the way they are framed, um, but also um, uh, realizing just the history. And um, um, I, think, I think it's important to do that little bit of homework in terms of um, realizing and uh, trying to understand who you're talking to who your audience is and why you want to make those connections mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um are there resources that you could share maybe online resources after afterwards 
Oh, for sure. I can, I, uh, I can send you some links in terms of, um, you know, we've all, a lot of us have heard about the really uh, great course at the University of Alberta, which is free. It's an Indigenous Studies course. Um, and, uh, um, you know, uh, our, our staff have been able to go to, uh, through the four seasons of reconciliation in terms of professional development. Um, so there are different uh, uh, courses out there as well as links. Um, we have the Truth and Reconciliation uh, um, website that they can refer to. Um, you know, there are treaty education websites um, and being top of mind that treaty means all of us. So, uh, you know, we're all treaty people, um, if you're Indigenous or not. Um, so, so definitely I uh, can share, share that, those types of resources. Fantastic. Yes, please send them yeah. to me because in the thank you email that we send to the participants, we will include those links. Okay. Has the pandemic um, shifted or had any impact on your work specifically? A lot of the work that I'm doing right now is research. Um, as long as I had a laptop and access to the internet, there's a lot of uh, resources that I can access. Um, you know, there was the um, uh, consultants report with the recommendations that did quite a bit of research and it's included in the report so I was able to build on that um, and also um, talking with people learning the history of George Brown that it's not just embarking on um, a relationship with Indigenous students um, you know and Indigenous education um, it's been involved since the 1990s you know we've had a education our Indigenous Education Council in place since then um, and there's a long, uh, uh, you know, uh, really a long history of uh, relationships within the uh, um, Indigenous community within Toronto as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to go to a, a few. Uh, we, our question and answer little thing here is building oh, okay. up. I think there's like four or five. Okay. I'm going to take a look at it. But as I go okay. through this, um, what's your favorite food, Jennifer? Um, right now, it's uh, curry chicken. <laughs> Curry chicken. I love curry yes. chicken. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to read these questions. Um, this one is from Christina, and she says, Jennifer, you are a true inspiration to many of us. I wonder who inspires you and why? That's a good question. Um, I actually had a, a mentor when I was younger, and it was, it, it was really ironic because it was in residential school, right? I, I spent um, eight years in, in Muskegon Education Center, which is north of Regina, and um, he was one of the staff members. And he used to give us motivational speeches after um, uh, mass on Sunday morning. We used to go to mass every morning. So on Sunday morning, and then he had this motto that, um, yeah, attitude and aptitude determined your altitude. So he really tried to instill that, even though we were in the school, that there was a whole world out there and there was a place for us within it. And um, if we, you know, if we had the right attitude and the right aptitude, um, we could go far, right? So I, I, that, I always kept that with me and um, also had some really good, uh, strong female mentors and, and as such as my mother, um, she was one of the first within her generation to get a, a, a degree um, and all the while doing it well, you know, she, she grew up where she needed to have a pass to leave the reserve, right? So, um, you know, that generation and, and how far they were able to come and then, uh, you know, bring us along with them. Um, and really that's my motivation is in, in, in the teachings that I was brought up with. Um, always, you know, always uh, build upon that. So then the next generation is, is, is set up to go further. And this is one of the reasons why I keep coming back to this work, because um, it's really important. Um, and uh, uh, I, um, I'm looking at my grandson and what kind of life he's going to have, um, and you know, the, his whole future is wide open. Inspiring. We have um, another question from the chat, and it is from Susie. And Susie says, Jen, do you see Indigenous awareness training being offered to GBC uh, staff, faculty, and admin? 
Um, I think that right now uh, we have the four seasons of reconciliation that's available for professional development. Um, and uh, that's a good first step. Um, and I think that uh, we, did, we can definitely build upon that. Um, there, I have a lot of ideas um, and uh, going forward in what the next few years um, are going to look like. So um, that's, that's actually uh, going to be part of the action plan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have another question um, from an anonymous attendee. Uh, who says, what are the traditional indigenous winter festivities for this time of year? Oh, <laughs> we just had a um, winter solstice um, um, uh, event yesterday with our students. Um, so uh, even though winter, winter solstice is, is next week, um, we wanted to have it early before the students left. And uh, basically what it is, is it, it's, a, it's welcoming back the sun. Um, and the days are going to start getting longer and um, and it's it's acknowledging um, now is the time to rest um, and then get ready for the spring um, which will then uh, be an awakening of sorts I probably didn't do that justice like the elder did uh, yesterday uh, but definitely um, you know uh, we were able to celebrate with our students and and it was a little sad because usually we have, um, we share food and uh, uh, we did what we could virtually um, and definitely next year um, uh, it, it'll be different. I, I, I believe, I'm hopeful um, that, that we will actually be able to have an in-person celebration. Mm -hmm. um, winter solstice. So did you have curry chicken yesterday? No, <laughs> <Or> I didn't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, okay, here's another question. It's from Brittany. Was there a moment or experience that was an, an aha moment for you that led you to wanting to work in this field? Um, yes. Um, I, I think that um, originally, uh, I, I, you know, I, when I was coming back from the States and wor I worked a lot of admin positions, um, a lot of bookkeeping, that sort of thing. Um, and I wanted to be an accountant um, at the time. Uh, so that's why I went to business school and um, I kind of uh, ended up pivoting um, at, um, uh, partway through that um, and then I, I had a mentor um, who was um, in, in, involved with politics and he um, kind of introduced the fact to me it kind of opened up my mind actually in terms of how supporting students would uh, have more of an impact um, than than me sitting in, a, in a, you know, not to disparage accounts, they do some important work. Um, they do, you know, um, and, and uh, working with numbers um, and uh, uh, using um, that gift of being able to talk to people um, and uh, encourage and. And support students in, in, in their journeys. Um, I, I always circled back to youth somehow, not on purpose. It just seems to be in my path, um, and, and not just youth, but also you know people who are mid career who want to pivot, um, and do some more uh, retraining. Um, so I think that um, I think I I make I'll I make more of an impact doing this type of work. Um, mm -hmm. Um, I know we only have two minutes left, but it's, there is a question from um, from somebody internationally. I just want to make sure we catch this question. So um, this question is, oh, there's, uh, there's, uh, there's a question from Colombia. Um, Andrea says, what a brave and inspiring story. Thank you for sharing with us. Here's the question, is it possible for international students to get in touch with indigenous initiatives and the GBC team to help from the heart, even though we're not born as part of an indigenous community? Um, I, I, I can speak to my experience with other schools that, that we've, we've had. We've had like, um, you know, indigenous student councils, that sort of thing, where we've had people from New Zealand and Australia, as well as um, from Latin America. Uh, be a part of those councils as well. So uh, I believe that there's an appetite for um, inclusion and uh, for 
uh, the realization that um, we're all Indigenous people and we've all got that in common. Um, and Indigenous to the Americas, uh, Turtle Island, if, uh, I'm not sure if everybody has heard about that, but when you look at um, North, North America, um, it it's, looks like a turtle, right? So um, um, definitely, I think um, there's, there's that, uh, you know, uh, there's that realization that um, we're all Indigenous. Incredible. Thank you yeah. very much, Jennifer, for your time today. And congratulations on your new role okay. as the Director of Indigenous Initiatives at George Brown College. We're all here to support you. Um, and anything that you need, please consider us all friends and give us a shout. I'm going to leave you with the last word. Okay. Um, I just wanted to um, highlight just the important relationship that uh, my office and the foundation has. When I was uh, interviewing, I, I couldn't stress that enough. There needs to be a really strong relationship um, with uh, uh, your team as, as, as well as my office. Um, because uh, I'm always looking at ways of, of um, Indigenous people can reclaim uh, our, our economy, right? We can reclaim the Indigenous economies and workforce development and education and training is, is key to that as well as supporting entrepreneurs in their training um, so then they can tap into the, uh, you know, the, the supply chain pipeline um, and uh, definitely there's there's a lot of great ways that we can work together um, with people in the community and industry um, organizations and uh, um, help them with their um, reconciliation action plans so I, I think uh, we'd be a good fit supporting education and training and supporting students is is, is is just the right thing to do thank you so much Jennifer thank you to all the participants who've joined us today Wishing you only good health, happy holidays to you and your family, and stay tuned for our next In Conversation with in January. We have a few really exciting speakers coming up. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.